Hello YouTube, for your reviewing pleasure today I have a 1988 Fujimi release of the Grumman EA-6A Black Bunny Intruder Aircraft. Taking a quick glance around the box, we do have on this side uh, the different marking options in I believe it to be Japanese and then also in English, so we have four different marking options on this. Coming around to the side here, we have um, what it looks like the kit number would be, which is 27014. However, right below that, it also has the 7A-H14. So if you happen to see it as either uh, serial number, uh, just check it out, but it might be the same kit. And then, obviously, the uh, obligatory history of the intruder aircraft. So taking a look here, tip down a little bit. Going through our instruction sheet here, just a uh, one-piece sheet pull-out. Looking, we have our pilots going into the seats, air intakes, compressor blades, and then the exhaust. Bottom panels going on, wings, landing gear and then your loadout of either tanks or bombs or um, missiles, whatever the case might be. All the little lumps and bumps that make an aircraft. And then looking here, we have our four different marking options. So we have the Marine Corps VMAQ-2. We have two different variants of their aircraft. So this one would be the all gray low vis scheme, and then you have the standard high vis scheme, and then um, here in the middle, uh, we have the two different variants for the U.S. Navy, VAQ-209 and VAQ-309. So, a couple different mark uh, marking options, painting guides, and then on the back, your sprue layout. Setting that to the side here, have our bombs, slip tanks, rocket pods, pretty much everything as well as our nose caps here. And then have the first sprue with the uh, upper and lower wings. That is a loose part falling around in there. Um, and have our compressor blades. The wheels are actually very nicely molded on these. Uh, even without the flat spot, which is pretty easy to put in, um, they're, they're very nicely detailed um, on front. And the back's kind of plain, uh, but usually that's hidden by the actual gear itself. But the front side um, has a lot of really nice hub detail. Um, taking a look, there is a whole bunch of ejector pins in the actual exhaust pipes. So, and then you have a first stage compressor blade up here, just poking out from around the pin, cockpit, and all of the other details for the intruder. Coming along to the clear glass, which as most of the time it is for this era of kit, there is quite a bit of movement. You can see magnification. In the actual glass itself, obviously being 172nd, it, it, it kind of is going to happen just with the thickness of the plastic. Uh, but being 172nd might get away with it. Uh, sadly, there is a little deflection even in the small glass pieces here on the side as well. Uh, the nice thing is this is actually how the kit would have come from the manufacturer in separate bags. So definitely reduce the risk of all of you know, any loose parts getting kicked around. So we have the gear, which has a lot of nice detail with the rigging, or the, uh, or I'm sorry, with all of the shock absorbers. Obviously you can spruce that up with a little bit of lead wire, something like that. And then the main fuselage itself. On the back side here, pretty plain Jane inside. However, as it's gonna be a pretty buttoned up model, that's to be expected. The crew figures there as well. So, and then the last item is our decal options. Now these have actually survived in my kit at least fairly, fairly well through the ages. Uh, there's really no issue with the actual 
yellowing or anything like that. I probably or um, I might pull off a decal I'm not going to use and try it with just without any additional, um, you know, covering or gloss coat over it. Uh, if it does seem like there is going to be a problem with cracking or something like that, I'll probably uh, use Micro Mark. I'm sorry, Micro Scale <laughs> Industries. They make a um, decal film that I will spray over it just to give it a little bit more rigidity. Uh, you can see the little Playboy bunnies, and just all the different markings. Also, it does give you the option to go ahead and use decals for the black around the actual canopy up here. Um, however, it'd probably be easier to spray that on. So just a few different options. So I hope you've enjoyed this 1988 release of the Fujimai Grumman EA6A Black Bunny.